Hey, this is Marissa Peer, creator of RT Team Rapid Transformational Therapy and also creator of PWF Perfect Weight Forever, two programs that are really changing people in the most amazing way and they've won incredible awards. But I want to talk to you today about eating disorders. There is an epidemic of eating disorders. There's an epidemic of bulimia, anorexia, body dysmorphia, exercise compulsion, orthorexia, we only eat foods that are clean and green and organic and fair trade. And many people don't understand what eating disorders really are and believe that you can punish your body into being the size you want to be. You can starve it, make it go to the gym, work hard. <laughs> And if you want to help somebody with an eating disorder, you need to tell them the truth. And here is the truth. Nature has given you some very interesting ideas about food in order to make you survive on the planet. I'm going to tell you about five or six of them and you're going to be fascinated. So here's the first one. Nature wants you to binge on sugar. Nature wants you to know where the sugar is and to run back and eat more. And you think, well, why would that be? Well, let me tell you. Take your mind back and imagine you live in a tribe. Every day you dig up the same stuff, you go out and you have to hunt and gather and you might find some vegetables, you may find some nuts or berries. And if you're lucky, you can spear a fish, trap a chicken, find some eggs, maybe get a bigger animal, but that's not every day. Mostly it's the same old, same old root vegetables, seeds, and sometimes. Maybe twice a year you would find honey. And if you found honey, oh my God, that was a huge event. You know, bees aren't stupid. They don't put the hive where you can see it. They hide hives. In tribes, the honey finders are very valued members of society. They climb really high and they get the hive and they scoop up all the honey and you eat the honey and you go home and you wake up and you go, honey and you run back to that hive to have more honey because you know that soon it will be gone. If you came across some ripe mangoes, you wouldn't go, do you know these mangoes are very high in fructose? I'll just eat a quarter. You know the truth. In a week, these mangoes will be spoiled. When will I get mangoes again? Who knows? I'm going to binge on mangoes. Our primitive mind is hardwired and hard-coded to remember exactly where sugar is and then to run back and eat more sugar till it's all gone. And nature thinks, what a great idea that is. You know what? I've laid down fat reserves. There aren't ripe mangoes in the middle of winter. So I binge in the summer and then it's okay. I can get through the winter. You know, I recently gave a lecture to the Royal College of Medicine and they were saying, how do you manage to have these outstanding successes with obese people. What is it you do that can get them to lose half their body? I say, well, first of all, I never make them feel bad about themselves. I never go, what's wrong with you? Why didn't you stop eating so much? Can't you see you're killing yourself? No, I tell them the truth. Nature wants you to remember where sugar is and to go back. In 30 years, I have never met a client who says, you know, when I wake up, I remember where the celery is and I go back for more or, Sometimes I'm watching TV and, I, and those peas in the fridge, that lettuce is calling my name. I keep going back. But they do say that ice cream, that cake is calling my name. So it is a fact that you are wired to remember where sugar is and to go back for more. And you know how to help yourself? Don't have it in your house. People who stop drinking don't keep alcohol in the fridge. People who stop smoking don't have cigarettes on the coffee table. Yeah, I get it. You might have children or a partner that likes that stuff. But if you have to have it in the house, don't put it in the fridge or the cupboard where you see it. Hide it. Put it out of sight. Because there's a second fact. When you see food, you want to eat it. Why is that? Well, imagine you lived in a tribe and the hunters came back and they'd speared a lot of fish that day. You went, I don't like fish. I'm not into fish. I think I'll just pass. Or, oh yeah, they brought back goat. I don't like goat. I'm not in the mood for antelope. Five days later, you think, what kind of idiot am I? Why did I say no to that meat, that protein? I need it now. And so we survived as a species by eating food when we saw it. And that's why when you go to a shop, 
And they put all the tempting food at the checkout. It's why you go on an aeroplane. They show you pictures of the food. It's why in a restaurant, they show you the desserts because they know if you see food, you eat it. That is another evolutionary trick that made us more certain to survive. If you open your cupboard, you see all this food that you're trying to resist, move it. Move it out of your eye line. Put the stuff in the salad drawer. Don't let the way to bring the bread basket to you. Don't go to all you can eat buffets because if you see food, you want to eat it. And the third trick is that variety makes you want more. You know, if you sat at home with a packet of digestive biscuits or a plate of buttered toast, you would eat so much and you go, I'm, I'm really bored now. But if you had a box of all different biscuits, a box of chocolates, you will eat every single one. Because every time you have a new taste, a new texture, and a new flavor, it actually re-stimulates your appetite. If I said I got a fruit salad and it's apples and blueberries, you'll eat a lot. But if I've got a salad with apples, blueberries, mangoes, pineapple, kiwi, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, passion fruit, papaya, you'll eat so much more because every new taste, every new texture stimulates your taste buds. Because I need a varied diet, you do, but not at every meal. If you put less variety in your lunch, you will eat less. So when you have something like granola or muesli, the very fact that that has 10 ingredients, oats, raisins, currants, all kinds of stuff, you will drink. If you have a coffee that's a mocha peppermint coffee with whipped cream, it's too many ingredients. Go back to having just three or four. When you have less ingredients, you're sated. So you could eat kale and go, well, this kale is really boring now. But if you had kale chips and you were dipping those kale chips into salsa and guacamole and spreading cream cheese on them and mozzarella, you'll eat so much more. So we have a natural say to when we've had enough, we stop unless we have too much variety. Now, food companies know that and they add more and more ingredients to food to make you eat more and buy more. But there is nothing that is a combo of fat and sugar except for breast milk. And again, when you're a baby, you got hooked on milk, you would make it. No baby because I don't like milk. They get hooked on mother's milk or formula milk. It makes them survive. And when you're stressed and you've had a bad day, you go, oh, macaroni and cheese, toast and butter, cereal and milk, ice cream, cookies and cream, hot chocolate with marshmallows in it. You know what you're doing? You're recreating that feeling you got having milky, fatty, sugary food that made everything right with the world. And pizza, by the way, and macaroni and cheese are milky, fatty, sugary foods. They may not taste sweet, but they are. Eating is an act of regression. We're going back. Oh, this reminds me of being in school, apple crumble and custard and ice cream. This reminds me of going to my grandmother. She always gave me cinnamon toast or hot chocolate or chocolate fudge. And so you're telling yourself you want to be a baby. And if you like that stuff, decide, you know, when I'm 95, I'll knock myself out with cookies and cream. Right now, I want to have a better body. So understand that your mind thinks it's a jolly good idea to do what you did when you were a primitive person. It kept you alive. Do you know what you died of more than anything 500 years ago? Take a guess. It wasn't illness and it wasn't war. It was hunger. Hunger was the number one killer of people. And to this day, we go, oh, I'm so hungry. Oh, I'm starving. I'm dying of hunger. And even though we know we've got salad and some cooked chicken at home in the fridge, and we've got maybe a 45-minute commute and the train is late, we start eating jelly babies out of the vending machine, jelly beans and taco chips and Kit Kats, because we're like, oh, my God, I just got to eat. I'm so hungry. That, again, is a primitive need to be scared of hunger, to sate yourself with food, and then you can't die of hunger. It's a wiring, but you know what? You can work with that wiring. You can say to your mind, okay, mind, I understand completely here. You think I'm going to die of hunger because it's six o'clock. I haven't eaten since one o'clock. I, I do need to eat. I'm feeling hungry. And you're going to drive me to that vending machine to eat two Kit Kats, but no. 
I have in my fridge at home delicious salad, wonderful chicken, whatever it is you have, and I am choosing to wait 45 minutes. And your mind will go, oh, okay, I thought you were really hungry, but now you're telling me you want to wait, you're choosing to wait, and then you will wait. This happens to me, I know it happens. You'll go to a restaurant and go, I'm not actually really that hungry. And then I look at the menu, then I start to feel really hungry because I'm mentally seeing the food. I read the menu, I'm like, where's the food? I'm so hungry. Then I start to eat the bread basket, which I wasn't even hungry for. I set foot in there. How many of you go to the store to food shop and go, oh, I'm so hungry now, and you start eating granola bars as you wander around the store? You have to talk to them and go, hey, mind, I know that you think as I'm seeing this food, I should eat it. I am choosing to wait for my food to arrive. I'm choosing to wait till I get home. I'm choosing to make better choices. When you say that, your mind hears the truth. You have a choice. You're making the right choice and you love that choice and you go, oh, I've got to eat rabbit food. Coffee isn't the same without sugar. My life isn't worth living without McDonald's and cake. Your mind believes whatever you tell it. Tell your mind better things. Help anyone struggling with food by pointing out these hacks. Nature wants you to live on the planet. But you can live on the planet now without having to binge. You can leave food. You can throw food away. You can wait to eat. And you will help yourself more than you can even imagine by saying the magic sentence, I am choosing to say no to pizza. And I'm choosing to feel so good about it. I want to fit into my jeans, to look good in my clothes, maybe to look good out of my clothes. To get what I want requires also what I don't want. So if I want to look good in my jeans and good on the beach, that requires you to say no to pizza and burgers and fast food and fries and you know what, and only am I choosing that. I'm choosing to love it, to be excited about it. And that is how I have phenomenal success. I'm going to lose half their body weight because I get them to understand it's not you, it's your wiring. And you can understand that wiring and work with it. You can make your mind work with you, not against you, because I don't know what hunger is. That's because if you say to yourself, I'm starving, oh, I'm starving, your mind goes, well, I have something called an apposet. And usually when you eat a certain amount, I tell you you're full, but you just told me you're starving. People die of being starving. So I'm going to shut that apposet off. Instead, you look at the food and go, okay, my stomach's the size of my fist. Two bowls bowls of food is just right for me. And also recognize that hunger doesn't mean you have an empty stomach. It can mean you're dehydrated. It can mean you're bored. It can mean you've eaten food that's so worthless, like a big bucket of popcorn, that you still haven't got any nutrients. There are all kinds of hungers, thirst hunger, emotional hunger, hunger because you haven't eaten the right food. When your stomach is empty, you will know. But even then... You can wait another hour, another two hours to eat the right food. I hope this helps you. And I really want you to share it with other people who need this help. Please like, please subscribe, please share. There are so many people who would benefit from understanding it's not their fault. They don't have to beat themselves up. It's fixable. Like, share, subscribe and send me some messages about the content you would really like to hear and go to marissapeer.com. We have a lot of free material to help you with eating issues and dieting issues and weight issues. Tell me how I can help you more and serve you more. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great day. See you soon.